Okay, so I mostly finished my Frankenstein project. I hope you can actually hear me over top of it. But I've got two Coolit Boreas Tech coolers here. So these are using Peltiers to chill the water. And then I'm using some standard water cooling stuff hooked up to it in order to actually get the most out of it. So I've got uh, an MC Res Micro Swift Tech MCP350. I've got it connected via some quick disconnects up to a, a Swift Tech Apogee. Okay, so this is quite quite chilly to the touch. I've got a fan blowing over the CPU socket to make it so that uh, I don't get any condensation problems and uh, water dripping on my motherboard here. The way I've actually powered it is just totally don't do this at home, kids, but I've actually taken um, the two power connectors and then I've used, I'm just kind of jammed them in there. This is an 8-pin connector. These even actually get quite warm to the touch. That's why I have them positioned all around the fan here. Every one of these, the, the, the Boreas's themselves are actually pulling about 400 watts just for the Peltiers. So I'm using a 1200 watt power supply to cool this whole thing. Anyway, I've got it hooked up uh, via an 8 pin power connector. Then I've uh, soldered together and wrapped up some wires and then Frankenstein that together. I've got this uh, coolant control center hooked up just so that I can monitor the coolant temps, but I don't think they're right anyway. Um, let me see. Oh, I can actually show you the... You know what? I'll run a quick benchmark here. So I'm running the uh, the Phenom 2 1090T. And I don't actually have CPU Z open at the moment. But I'll just fire that right up here. You can have a look. So I've only got it running at 4.2 gigahertz for the time being. And I haven't had any problems with Prime 95 yet. So I'm definitely going to try and push it further. But I think the most impressive part about this actually is here. Let's stop the torture test and open up core temp. Check this out. The CPU temps at idle. Oh, well that shouldn't be right. Yeah, it's going down. I think it's actually going to take a while to go back down after I start core temp. But oh yeah, you can see here the low temp, so the lowest it's been, and yeah, it's going to creep its way back down there now. I think it takes a while to update, is zero degrees. So it actually idles at zero degrees. And then as soon as I fire up the uh, the torture test, it jumps up to a whopping... Ooh, 15 degrees. So that's at 4.2 gigahertz under load. You can see the actual high once it's been running for a while. I I've had it running is 22 degrees. So that's running with the two Boreas's on a, uh, a Swiftec Apogee block. So that's an ancient Apogee. This is actually my first water block ever. It just has a, a new uh, mounting plate on it, so it's been updated a little bit. I also put a bow on it as well. If you're into the Apogee, you'll know what a bow is. Anyway, I guess that, that pretty much covers my little Frankenstein project, and I'm going to give you some overclocking updates as soon as I have some. I'm going to see how high I can push this uh, 10... Uh, 10 oh, it's calling it a 1095T. That's interesting. I wonder if that's some kind of omen. Anyway, it's a 1090T, and let's see how high we can push it.